click boom what's going on faithful this is your boy mike from the nothing but niners crew we are back guys the season is finally here we are here to bring you guys another fun filled video podcast all right i got my man nick i got my man kev i got my man timmy neutron also known as anthony we're all here man to bring you guys uh some fun news we're gonna do a small little round table type of talk here um training camp is in so before we get to all that nitty gritty stuff i want to let you guys know where to find us First and foremost, check out the website, www.nothingbutniners.com. There you're going to see a whole bunch of articles by the slew of writers that we have. Uh, you're going to see our social media pages, the Twitter and Snapchat. Both of those are nothing but nine ERS. Uh, you'll also see the Facebook and the Instagram. Both of those are nothing but Niners spelled all the way out. All right. And by the way, Jimmy Garoppolo approves this message. You should definitely give us a follow on all those avenues. OK. Uh, also, we have a podcast, not just this video thing here on YouTube. OK. Check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Google Play, SoundCloud, any platform that plays podcasts. We are there. You can search for NB Niners and we're going to pop up just like that. All right, guys. So um, also, if this is your first time checking us out on YouTube, we want to say thank you. We really, really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen so you know exactly when we are going live. All right. Make sure you hit the little bell, get your notification sent to your phone. So you can be in the middle of in the middle of driving or something like that. And you see the little notification, you're like, oh, got to pull over. Nothing but nine. It's about to do a show. I don't want to miss this one. No, I'm kidding. Don't pull over. We're not that important. It'll be here when you get back. I promise. All right, guys, without no further ado, I want to pass it to my man, Nick. What's going on, baby? How you doing? What up, faithfuls? It's been a, it's been a while, man. I haven't been on video with a little bit little bit of time here, but uh, I'm back, man. There's two jobs. I'm gonna have to push one to the side, kind of like the Kiki, you know. But uh, but either way, I had to do that just to get it out of there because you know everybody's doing it. Anyway, if you ain't riding with the NBN, you got issues, man. Hit that subscribe button definitely down there. Make sure you follow us everywhere. Mike said, and uh, gonna have some. Some great content coming out this this year, man. And we got I'm excited, man. We got some new writers. We got some some uh, some new guests joining us today. I know Kev's been on a uh, on a uh, video pod already, but man, we got Anthony. Anthony is uh, is new to our our, our team. And uh, Anthony, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody, man? Let them know where they can follow you at and stuff like that, real quick. All right, guys, what's going on? My name's Anthony Perry. Uh, this is my first video, obviously. I really haven't had the chance because I work all the time and I go to college also. But um, I'm very excited to be part, a part of the NBN crew. Um, I have a lot of Niners opinions, just like everyone else around here. Lots of high expectations. Um, you guys follow me on Twitter. My name or my handle is Anthony Perry 925 It's mostly baseball and football, if you guys are into that. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited. This is gonna be a really, really good season. So let's go Niners. Awesome. Kev, man, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let them know where to follow you. Even tell them about your YouTube page because that thing is rocking over there too. Yeah, man, what's going on, Faithful? You know, it's your boy Kev, Silverado Kev, and I'm live from the Silverado as usual. Uh Instagram, Mr. Nine E R S on my uh Twitter, 49ers on my. And here we go. Let's go, man. Um, my YouTube channel. Follow, follow me at Kev Mitchell. You know, I'm always live from the Silverado. Happy to be here with, with my NBN family, man. Um, let's get to talking, man. I'm excited. I'm juiced. Like I'm like I'm gonna be at practice tomorrow or something. You know. Nice, nice. Flex on him. Flex on him, man. <laughs> Look, guys, man. Both of you is welcome to the group, man. It's a it's uh thankful to have you guys here, man. You guys are great additions to the team. You guys bring a lot of knowledge. And uh, NBN's on the uproar, uproar. So if you guys aren't subscribed, man, make sure you do it and uh, check us out. So uh, big shout out to Luke Walsh. I see him in the uh, chat. Uh, Patrick Gotham, um, Billy Jones, Rob Amon, you know, all the guys that are usually in there. So big shout out to you guys, man. Always watching and always staying faithful with us. And uh, you guys follow my motto, man. Above all else, stay faithful. So, Mike, what's going on, man? Let's get this started. Super excited about uh, training camp opening today. So, as we all are, we've we've all been praying and praying football season is going to get here. So, um, training camp opens today, Mike. Man, there were some pressers today. Man, I know you want to touch on some things. Um, I know you want to talk about the injuries that were brought up. So, what were your thoughts today on the presser from John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan and uh, about the injuries that they, that they spoke of today? 
Yeah, I mean, in general, you hear a lot of cliche things of, you know, last year doesn't matter. The in, the win streak didn't make a difference. You know, we're going to come out, we're going to play hard. You're going to hear all those kind of things. And you could tell that those guys were already in midseason form with the with the cliche statements and things like that and the very vanilla statements. Um, so what I focused on were some of the uh, injuries, like you said, and there were quite a few. Um, the, one of the guys who I don't think is going to make the roster anyway, uh, Jonathan Cooper, the guard. Uh, he's already on the um, PUP list. Um, they're saying he'll be back soon, but we'll see. You know, uh, another guy that I think has an uphill battle to make a roster spot is wide receiver Trent Taylor. They said he's on the PUP list. Um, now we all remember he had like a minor back surgery uh, in the off season, so that's what's holding him back a little bit right now. Um, but listen, man, more reps for the for the young bucks that are there behind him. Richie James, man, it's your chance. Come in here, you gotta do your thing. Dante Pettis, I saw you signed your contract today. Now go out there and get that money, baby. You got to live up to it, okay? Um, another guy was linebacker Dakota Watson. You know, Watson stepped in a couple of times for us on the field, but his presence was really felt in the special teams unit. He's starting the season on the PUP list. Uh, all three of those guys that I named with, between Cooper, Taylor, Watson are expected to come back sometime soon. Uh, another person who was expected to come back sometime soon but was on a different list was Malcolm Smith. And I know that we have some opinions to share about Malcolm Smith amongst the four of us. So I'm not going to touch on that too much. Uh, us as 49er fans, we know he had the pectoral tear uh, last season. Now it's something to do with his leg, I believe. But whatever the reason is, look, he he's less available than Jimmy Ward. But we'll get to that later. All right. Um, after that was uh, DB Marcel Harris, who tore his Achilles last year. Um, he's on the NFI list as well. Um, he should be recovering and might get a chance to, uh, you know, work out for the team a little bit later before uh, the season actually gets here, before we kick off week one. And uh, last but not least, this guy will not be making his appearance known, his presence known, I should say, with the 49ers. Uh, there will be no official appearances for Kentavious Street, the draft pick that we picked up. Uh, this will officially be his redshirt year. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with his injury, um, he tore his uh, – ACL while working out for the New York Giants for the combine, the private workout. So defensive lineman Contavious, Contavious Street, who, by the way, was one of Larry Kruger's favorite draft prospects. If you guys didn't hear that latest podcast, we posted a couple of days ago, maybe two days ago. Uh, we had Larry Kruger on the podcast, and he said that this was somebody that he liked before the 49ers even picked him up. So you guys make sure you check that out. you got some good knowledge on that podcast as well. Uh, back to you, Nick. Man, I'm all done rambling. Uh, bring it home, man. Let's do this. Look, man, you guys always got to love Mike's musings, you know, Trent Taylor not making a team and all, but, you know, they're a little musings. It's okay. It's amusing for him, I guess, but uh, <laughs> I don't think it's amusing for anybody else. But anyway, look, man, um, big news on uh, uh, Trent Taylor not starting, and um, I love Trent Taylor. I think he's he does make this team, but I also think that him starting an injury on the pup list this year, doesn't help him with a Richie James and a Dante Pettis who has officially signed today um, a four-year deal. Um, you can check that out, that article on nothingbutniners.com. Um, you can check that out there. But um, I think I think uh, Malcolm Smith, man, if he wasn't getting paid so much money, I think it'd be hard for him to make this team. But, I mean, I also think that Warner will step in. And uh, there's been a lot of talk about during rookie minicamp and, and uh, camp about how well Warner – has played and his low, his communication with the team and his you know how verbal he is and his demand for this this defense. So I don't think we're losing much there. I mean it's just sad because we paid um, Malcolm Smith so much damn money to come here, a lucrative contract, and I don't even think he's touched the field. Well, I think he played the first game or no, he got hurt in preseason, so he he hasn't touched the field in a regular NFL season game. So, um, but. Definitely got to keep an eye on uh, Richie James and Dante Pettis in training camp because they're definitely going to get more snaps um, in preseason with uh, Trent Taylor being on the pup list. But I don't think it goes as far as Mike's musings and Taylor's cut, and I'm not going to get all into that. But um, my biggest take today from the pressers was um, the the question was asked about does jo John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan feel the pressure of – you know, winning the last five games. And the biggest thing that I took from him, and I know Kev's going to touch on this, his demeanor a little bit, but um, the biggest thing I took from him is, look, man, we hear it, our players hear it, but everybody starts 0-0. Zero, zero. 
And we're not in here to come out and say, you know, yeah, we won the last six games. Everything's going to be handed to us, but there's got to be a game to be played. So basically there's got to be a game to be played. And, um, you know, I think that Kyle Shanahan's going to have this team prepared and ready and um, going, going forward. So, um, Kev, what was what was some of the uh, things that you took away from the Kyle Lynch, John Shan or Kyle Lynch? I always do that. John Shan <laughs> John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. That's Nick's musings right there. Don't pay any attention to him, just like you do with Mike's. Um, but anyway, um, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan's press conference, or it could have been Richard Sherman or Jimmy Garoppolo or or whoever. What was the biggest thing you took from one of the pressers today? Well, I'm saying it like this, man. Um, like I told you, as far as Kyle Shanahan's demeanor, I've never really been a, a fan of his energy, you know, but I mean, his football mind, great football mind, he's savvy, you know, very, very intricate, you know, but today, I don't know if it was more scripted or status quo, but it was more energy, energy involved, energy, energy involved, and uh, you know I mean? I like it. I mean, you know, John Lynch, you know, to his right, you know, and they kind of playing off each other, but I'm going to tell you like this, man. <clears throat> You can judge people not off what they did, but what they do. So, therefore, you can't judge it off one of five games in a row last year. you got to judge it off what's going to happen when we start this year. I mean, and like I said earlier, it can go either way. You know, it can be a bad season or it can be a great season. But, you know, 6-10, and 10, anything below that, you know, is kind of a letdown, especially with all the weapons we added. I mean, we have the makings, like, like uh, Richard Sherman said today, we have the makings to be a playoff team. The question is, is it going to – come together like that you know so a lot of these guys is their first year uh you know it's, it's the second year together now with Shanahan and you know and, and, and the DC uh Robert Soleil I mean so it should be much more smooth it's just a matter of everything gelling and like I said uh in a chat the other day man if we stay relatively healthy and we keep the best guys like Kyle Shanahan keeps saying and I, I and please don't be Mr. Screw. When he say keep the best guys, it don't matter if they, they vets or, or rookies. The best guys are the best guys. And as far as Trent Taylor and Richie James, I'm not saying I'm not a Trent Taylor fan, but Richie James, that boy boogie. You see what I'm saying? I mean, so Trent Taylor with a, with a third down machine, he money, but Richie James got good hands too. And I think Richie James is better after the catch than Trent Taylor. So – I mean. I, Oh, my bad, Mike. Nobody take it. <laughs> Look, man. All right, before we get into this, so all of you guys that want Julio Jones, you can't do it because the Falcons and him just have agreed on a revised contract that adjusts his 2018 salary, so he will be reporting to camp. Oh, so let's X that. So let's X that with all the Niners fans. But you heard it here. But anyway, it's not Niners news. Right. It's still Niners news. But anyway, so – I understand you guys basing your playmaking ability off of Richie James and Dante Pettis and what they've done in college. This ain't the college level. DBs are way bigger. DBs are more physical at the line of scrimmage. Y'all y'all can't say that they're going to do the same thing. Look, I, I just can't give you that yet, Mike. I can't give it to you yet. There's been plenty of players that were supposed to be stars coming into the NFL and were complete flukes. You can't write. I can't. I can't. I can't mark this guy in an NFL caliber yet. I'd have done the same thing. I like Trent Taylor last year. I was happy that we drafted him. Did he work out? Yeah, it worked out. He played well. Could he could have not gone that way? Yeah. That's the only reason I can't get on board of this train yet. I got to see these guys actually play in the NFL before I talk and say, yeah. Do they have the ability? Absolutely. They definitely have the ability. It's there. But you can't just say that an NFL guy who, who was dominant on third down, helped an offense in a scheme that he fits perfectly in, is going to be booted to the curb just because of playmaking abilities that is there, that he hasn't done anything yet. Nick. You guys, you know, that's the only reason I can't stick up for you guys. I like Richie James. I like Dante Pettis. I think they're going to bring a huge agreement or a, a big difference in special teams and punt returns and kickoffs and just they're special players. But they have to prove to be special in the NFL, not just the college level. Nick. That's the only thing. True. Nick. Mike. <laughs> Mike, uh, look, uh, I'm muting your musings right now. <laughs> uh, Nick, there was two people that were doing a show last year. It was me and you. 
And this is before the season even started. And one of those two people said, and I quote, I'm calling it right now. Trent Taylor is the next Wes Welker. I did. And it damn sure wasn't me. Before he took a snap, you were claiming this guy to be the next Wes Welker. And, and what, wait, sudden, hold on, hold on, hold on. Refine that because what else did I also say? Not all, not only just because of his playing ability, but because of his build and the way that he runs routes and the way that he does things, he reminded me of Wes Welker, that he would be a Wes Welker in this league, which he basically was in his first year. And that was still without seeing him take a single professional snap. So when, when I say, and when Kev says that Richie James is going to be special. Oh, I can't buy that because I haven't seen him do anything in the NFL. No, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not arguing the fact that he can't be special. I'm arguing the fact that you that you are kicking somebody off the team to put him in without taking a snap. I didn't kick anybody off. It, it don't matter who gets kicked off. We only got a certain amount of wide receiver positions available. Well, we kept Trent Taylor. We got rid of Jeremy Curley. Like that's that's the way of the NFL. Hey, look, I don't want to turn this into a debate right now. I want to get uh, Anthony's opinion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm going to digress. Uh, I want to get Anthony's opinion on what he, uh, what one, he took from the pressures today. One second. That will be to be continued because we're going to go at it on that one. So we'll do another show on that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> what up, man? Anthony, what's your, what's your opinion on the whole? Oh, on the – where are we going off of the pressures or the wide receivers? The pressers. What did you take from the pressers today? So I missed most of the press, the pressers, but one thing I always noticed, and this can go back from last season too, is I think Mike pointed it out. Kyle Shanahan is always monotone in any press conference. Any. And I think the way he carries himself is he doesn't want to give off any sort of, I don't know, like expectations or things to really think about to people like us or the media because it seems like he really wants to keep his team close. He wants to keep like everything him and Lynch are going to decide to do from within. They don't want any of us to really know about anything. So like, like you guys say, when it comes down to James versus Taylor cutting Curly and stuff like that, I don't think it's going to go announced probably until the roster cuts start to happen. Cause I mean, look at all the stuff that's going on now. It seems like a lot of it's last second. Even though training camp is just starting, it seems like they're making all these moves the day of training camp, the day before training camp. So I think, you know, from my opinion, like I said, I didn't really see much of it. Kyle Shanahan is very good at keeping things to himself, keeping things within the organization. And um, I'd say that's really it. So they, he doesn't give away much at all. So like I said, it's going to go out all through offseason – we're going to have to just play the guessing game to see what's going to go on with this team because it's going to be one hell of a battle for every position, bottom line. Like, one thing to think about, too, is that you can almost say the vast majority of spots on this team are not guaranteed. Who, who are locks, really? Like, a handful of O-line guys, a handful of receiver, receivers. We only have two guaranteed backs. I would honestly say Kittle is the only guaranteed tight end to stay on this team. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, we don't even know the starters. The linebackers is going to be interesting. The D-line is going to be interesting. The DBs are going to be interesting. So, like like I said, K KS is really good at keeping things to himself. And I think that's exactly what he did today and what he's going to keep doing throughout the offseason. That's that's kind of what I get from the pressers from him. Well see. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so there was a couple of other uh, things that, that happened today. Uh, before we move on, does anybody else have anything else to say about uh, information from the pressers today? Uh, now, we got to see the likes of – I see you, Kev, so Kev will be next. Uh, we got to see Jimmy and um, – Jimmy, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. We got to see DeForest Buckner briefly. We saw Jimmy Garoppolo up there. We saw Joe Staley up there. Um, I don't think I'm missing anybody else, but, uh, Kev, you said there was something else that you took away from the pressers? Go ahead, man. Yeah, well, real quick, just – you know, get back into the, the drama you and you, you, know, you, you had with Nick. Um, him starting the season like this don't help his case, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm going to say one thing I learned in the Navy, man. Competition eliminates yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I would have to make it, you know, to be honest. But I'm just saying just 
if Ricky James performs well enough in camp in preseason and, and, and Taylor's still not really 100%, I'm saying, you know, I, w- I wish this guy the best. But, um, and, and, and like Ant said, ain't nobody safe. Anybody can get it. <laughs> Aside from Defoe and, and, and maybe, you know, Sherman and uh, there's not many guys who can't lose their spot. And that's, I, that's, that's always good. The competition is steel, sharp and steel. So, hey, may the best man win. Let's go. Look, if James comes in here and balls out and he plays way better than Taylor, I'll drop Taylor like I've dropped plenty of my girlfriends. <laughs> Cause I want to win. I want the best. I want the best on this you can, team. You can get the tire uh, Nick. Yeah, you know, I, I I want the best on this team. Like, I don't care as long as they're here to help us win. It's just I couldn't. I just can't. Me personally, right now, can't jump on that train until I see something. But it's not that it's totally out of the water. It's just I, I love busting Mike's chops. But there was one other thing I took before Anthony. Before you go, there's one other thing I took from the pressers. Kyle Shanahan put the guard position on blast and he put Bradley Pinion on blast basically yeah. saying these two are the positions that are, are being competitive at right now. And I don't think Bradley Pinion gets enough credit in this, this team, man. Like I love Bradley Pinion. Like I see a lot of Niners fans blasting him, but if you look up his average punts, his hang times, pinning the ball back past the 20, this guy is definitely under the radar. I don't think he's going to lose this competition, but I think, you know, everybody's like, oh, Locke's good, Locky, or however you say his name, Lock A, Lock E, Lock, whatever. I don't think he's going to come in here and beat him, but just to put Pinion on blast like that, like what Pinion's done for this team, and I know it's because the fans love Andy Lee, and the fans love this, and they fall in love with this person, and they just can't let go of a person, but. Bradley Pinion is way underrated, man. So I just wanted to touch base on that because that kind of that kind of messed with my head, Mike. Let me let me piggyback off of that. Also, one of the things that Bradley Pinion does really well is directional kicking. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to hear about Lock or Lockie that uh, he's got a hell of a foot. Yeah, that's fine. You can kick the ball 80 yards if you want, but if you're starting at the 25 and you don't have the uh, the versatility or the skill to pin somebody. And within 10, 15 yards, then that, that, you know what I mean? That's a big difference. And so that's something that Bradley Pinion does well. And because the punts haven't, he's, I think he muffed maybe one punt a year. I think the main reason that they're doing this is because it's contract time for him. This is, this, this is it. It's time to see if they're going to give him another contract or do we want to bring in a guy on the vet minimum? I really think that's all this is about. Uh, I think Bradley Pinion is going to be here, but you're right. He did say that, that uh, the right go- Now it was weird. He did say that the right guard position is the question mark box on the on the offensive line, right? But then he said we also assume Tomlinson is going to be plugged in at the left. I don't know. The way he said that part about Tomlinson, it kind of had me thinking to myself, maybe Tomlinson ain't quite that safe either. So, And then that's when he went on to what Kev was saying with the, uh, the best are going to play no matter what or no matter who's there. So we'll see what happens, man. But, yeah, I think I think uh, Pin, Pinion – he doesn't get enough credit, like you said, Nick. Well, all right. I was just going to say, Anthony, one second. Um, like Luke Walsh just said, fans are mad because Bulky used a draft pick on you, on opinion, but that's no reason to discard him. And that could be because they used a, a high fifth rounder on him. So, um, but yeah, just touch base. So, Anthony, go ahead, buddy. Okay, so just a couple quick tidbits. The thing about Pinion, he's one of the most underappreciated guys on our team. And secondly, field position wins football games. If you have a dude who can kick within the 20, if he can keep balls within the 20, hell, even if it's the 19-yard line off of a punt, that's a huge difference. Difference Because we've seen punters totally screw up kicks and the wind knocks it back or they miss kick the ball. And next thing you know, the – the offense is starting right where they kick the ball. So stuff like that to look out for. I mean, I mean, our special teams is great. You know, it was good last season. I expect a lot this season. So like I said, no opinion love. There needs to be. But secondly, to go off the wide receiver thing one more time, Richie James versus Trent Taylor. Kendrick Bourne versus Aldrick Robinson. Marquise Goodwin versus Dante Pettis. Things to think about. The, all three of these guys or all six of those guys each have similar traits, similar traits. Like we say, it's going to be a big battle. 
one of the things that you got to pay attention to is that youth youth is always going to win if it's if all things are created equal you're going to take the younger guy every time so that's going to be a big tiebreaker with those things uh and now with it in the situation of you know trent taylor and richie james are the same age so that's not going to be a, the difference maker that might come down to availability comfort and things like that um so we'll, we'll see that, that those are really good points that you brought up there anthony uh go ahead kev i know you you got to make sure you take yourself off of mute though kev but go ahead uh the floor is yours bro uh yeah man um to, i'm good so as far as opinion i agree the guy is very underappreciated, but there were a couple times at the wrong times <laughs> that he had some of his worst kicks, and I'm like, oh, not right now, man. But what Anthony said that was just correct. I don't care if it's Madden, schoolyard football, whatever. Field position is key. If you can get that ball, like you said, within the you know the 19, the 20, or even within the five, you're like, yes. There you go, defense. You welcome. Do your thing out there for us. Now. Um, to switch back to, to the receivers thing and just say something about Robinson and Bourne, no contest. I think Robinson can, no contest. Kendrick Bourne is a monster. Can, I, I was on Kendrick Bourne in preseason. Remember that, that, that touchdown he scored where he shook the shoes off old boy in the flat and then uh, scored the touchdown and then caught the little the, the fade route? Oh, yeah. Big things come from, from Kendrick Bourne. But you're right, though, Ant, you know, those two – are the battles, but nah, no contest, man. No contest. Uh, Dante Pettis, he can play slot or outside. So, and, and hey, speaking of which, speaking of which, if he can do anything like he did in college in a return game for us this year, do you realize we haven't had a return for a touchdown since 2011? Hmm, in a regular season? When Ted again scored a kick and a punt return in the same game. Ted it's Ginn. a long time, bro. Against the Seahawks, the only yes, reason Jim won. Harbaugh, the only reason Jim Harbaugh ever beat Seattle in Seattle, that was the one time <laughs> he did it. That was the one time he did it was because Ted Ginn Jr. ran back two of those kicks within the last ten minutes of that game. That's the only reason it happened. And don't get me wrong, Trent Taylor, he, he did okay last year, you know, uh, in the return game. But that goes back to how explosive Richie James is. You know what I'm saying? I mean. I can't wait to see it, man. You know, and it might be Pettis. And you ask me, a good mix of them is, is, is going to be the best medicine because that way you, you keep teams off balance. You don't know who's going who to get the ball. You know, one, one, one time it might be Pettis, one time it might be James. You know, who knows? But like I said, man, back to Kendrick Bourne, no contest. Isaac Robinson, no disrespect to you, bro. But Kendrick Bourne, KB, he's a dog out there, KB, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. And like I said, man, the youth movement, it's real. It, it, it's real. So um, let's go, man. I, I can't wait, man. It, it, it's it's and and now we got a couple of dogs out there too. And like I said in our last video, with Sherman out there, even when he not on the field, he has an impact. He got them boys believing in themselves. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I think he got the coaches believing in themselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's go, man. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. We're gonna surprise some people, but I will say this for the fans. Don't have expectations too high. I want to hear y'all, 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 y'all bitching and complaining. Oh, well, well, that's your fault. <laughs> so kind of, kind of, kind of taper your expectations. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, Nick, man, introduce the next topic for us, man. Let's keep this thing rolling here. Uh, we got a, uh, we've got a lot of participation here. You know, there was an interesting comments that I'm seeing. I don't know how or when to respond to them, uh, but someone, I think it was Luke Walsh, said in here, um, double tight, uh, double slot wide receivers. Uh, that's going to catch defenses off guard. And that's interesting from a standpoint of the offense dictating the personnel that has to come out on the field. If we were to come out in a four wide receiver set, two wide receivers in the slot, no tight ends on the field, bro, that that is dangerous. That is dangerous, man. Oh, that is something that gets me excited right now, man. You Matt, can, uh, what, go ahead. I'm sorry. You can actually do that with, the, with Brita and McKinnon lined up in the – on the outside too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You could, there's definitely formation that you can start in one way and then, you know, have the guys change formation. All of a sudden the defense is like crap. They're going to have no choice, but to pin their ears back. And I, if, if I'm a defense and I'm seeing a uh, Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo led offense doing that on me, 
fuck it. They're probably going to get yards anyway. Send the six man. You know, they only got five linemen in there. There's nobody to protect from the blitz. I'm sending I'm sending a six guy and hoping for the best. Get the rhythm as off as possible because you you can't let them just sit stand back there and pick you apart like that. So I, I agree with you. But go ahead, Nick. The floor is yours, man. Let's uh let's keep this thing rolling. Before here. before we get to this next thing, real quick, I just wanted to say RK Belmont said Garcon, Goodwin, Taylor, Bourne, Pettis, James. Those are the six who make the team. I can probably agree with that. I can live with that. Yeah. Garcon, Goodwin, Pettis, Bourne, Taylor, James. Yep. I like that. Them boys, them boys in the practice squad. Yeah. So, all right. So let's move on. So we've already talked about, um, we talked about the players being released today. We already talked about that. So um, I want to get into expectations, but basically I don't want you to say expectations as in what you think the team is going to do. I want to, I want to talk about, a, I want everybody to name a player that, you're excited about or what you're most excited about, whether it's a player or um, all right, well, we'll talk about that in a second, but um, <clears throat> I don't, it doesn't have to say, Oh, the team's going 10 and six or the team's going nine and seven or those type of expectations. I want to, I want you to tell me something that you're most excited about for this 2018, 2019 season. It could be a player. It could be a place that you're, the team is going um, or such like that. So um, <clears throat> let's start off with Anthony. Anthony, give me one thing that your your you know your season expectation this year is, as in like a player that you're excited about or such like that. So it's not so much a player, but one thing I am excited about. And here's I'm gonna start this off with a hot take: the Niners are gonna beat Seattle in Seattle. I'm very excited to see that. That's our first hot take. I'm gonna say that. The reason why I'm excited about that is because the first time, when was the last time we beat Seattle? 2011. In Seattle, that was the kick return Mike was talking about. Uh oh. <laughs> no, I'm very excited about that because, you know, for so many years outside of that last win in Seattle, we've just gone through hardship. It's been hard. There's been a lot of adversity, lots of turnover, four head coaches in four years. You know, it's ridiculous. So, the big thing I want to emphasize is that taking taking a dub in Seattle is going to be a turning point for this team. I think that's in the second half of the season when they play Seattle. You know, it's going to be a huge game. It's going to, it's going to show a lot about our team. But I'm very excited about that because it's if we can take if we can take a game in Seattle, Sherman's old grounds. By the way, I'm expecting Sherman to get two picks in that game. You know, just a big big f you to Russell Wilson. But no, I I'm, I'm very excited about that. That's going to be a huge game for the Niners, and it's going to be the downfall of the Seahawks. And it's going to be the uprising of the Niners, bottom line. You know, it's we're hitting that point where it's time for the NFC West to turn over. And like everything is saying, it's Niners and Rams, Niners and Rams, you know. Seattle's going down. And like I said, my expectation is a dub in Seattle. That's going to be that's going to be the eye opening moment for the Niners when all of our fans, all of us can say this team is legit. That's my take. OK, <clears throat> Mike, I know you love that because you're sitting there. And I see you get all hyped and pumped up and stuff like that. But, Mike, we've been saying this for the last three years. Like, this is going to finally be the year that we beat Seattle. We finally – I mean, I've come on the 49ers Gab podcast with you, you know, before before you came over here. And I can remember us just sitting back saying, this is the year that we beat Seattle in Seattle. This is it. This is it. And every year we just get let down. But God damn it, this is the motherfucking year. I'm telling you right now. If this isn't the year, we're never winning in Century Link. So Century Field, whatever the hell you want to fucking call it, the asinine asshole stadium, 12s, whatever. Um, but you just got me so hyped with that, Anthony. Like, I'm not even I don't even know what else to say about that. Cause that expectation and, and that excitement just thinking about beating Seattle in Seattle and just hearing their – actually not hearing their fans, I should say, because they're losing, but will just be amazing. Like, we could go – we could go 6-10 and 10 again, and as long as we sweep Seattle, I think I'd be happy as shit this year. Like, um, because that really will just put the, the pin on the head that Seattle is really done. And, I mean, Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman, you know, they're all gone. That Legion of Babies – it's a legion of babies now instead of legion of boom anymore. So, um, 
And there's a new there's a new team in 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 town, and it's called the Wrecking Crew. So we're coming. We are definitely coming. So Mike, what is Mike? I seen you smiling over there, getting all hyped and pumped up, man. And it feels good to, to think about that. But what is something that is that you're most excited about for the season? Mine uh, is a little bit more selfish than that. You know, back when Harbaugh was here, um, the fall in 2012, we got the what six primetime games, the playoffs, and all that stuff. And the feeling that I got anytime the team was doing something good on primetime, my phone was blowing up from friends and family that never talked football with me. Guess what? We got those primetime games back finally. And that I, I has nothing to do with who we're playing, the score, or anything like that. I miss people talking football with me that didn't normally do it. You know, if we're losing, people text me, Psh, I can't believe your team is doing this right now. I used to have people who text message me because they had the same initials as this SF right here. A Sonia Feliciano used to text me and be like, yo, your boys are making me look bad. Those are my initials. Like, you know, little stuff like that. I'm looking forward to people who don't normally watch the 49ers. I'm, I'm looking forward to us getting some recognition this year. And damn it, if, if it's good, that's even better. Uh, but I want people to know, you know, those boys have actual players on that team. We're going to get people into the Pro Bowl this year. It's going to happen. You, you can't go from one whack-ass Thursday primetime game to – uh, getting people into the into the playoff uh, into the Pro Bowl, you know, it's a popularity contest, and the way you win that popularity po contest is by being popular on primetime television. So with us having five or six games this year, and all of them being so back to back to back, there's there's a four week stretch when we're on primetime three weeks. You know what I mean? We're we're going in there. We're taking on Seattle. We're taking on the the Rams, and we're taking on the Packers or something like that. It's something crazy like that within a four week time frame. We're going to be on primetime four times out of the month. Think about that. You know, I don't even need direct TV for this shit. This is great. I, I can get I can bust out the HD antenna if I wanted to. You know, I can watch this in the parking lot anywhere. That's a beautiful thing, man. And so the, the 49ers are finally going to get some recognition. Um, whether we're winning or we're losing, people are going to finally say, you know what? I see why they talk about DeForest Buckner. You know what? I see why they say Kyle Shanahan is a genius. I see why Jimmy Garoppolo got that contract that he got. I see why Pierre Garçon was underrated. You know what I mean? Now it's time for us to get our recognition, winning or losing. People are going to see it. You know what I mean? The NFL is a game of inches and all that. I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to win all those primetime games. There's some, they're primetime for a reason. The NFL expects them to be slugfest. But people are going to recognize that we have some players on this team. All this talk you hear all offseason about, well, the Niners don't have any wide receivers. Keep that same energy, y'all. The Niners don't have any good running backs, myself included. Keep that same energy. You know what I'm saying? The Niners don't have a secondary. Keep that same energy. You are going to know our players' names by the end of the year. I guarantee it. And that's the shit I can't wait for. I'm done. You forgot another one, though. Why was Mike saying that they were going to cut this guy, Trent Taylor? No, I'm just messing around. <laughs> I'm just messing around. But, Mike, that's a perfect example. I'm a little pissed off that we have so many primetime games this year just because I work nights now. So that fucking blows. But anyway, um, great. Th those are two great season, uh, you know, things to be excited about. Beating Seattle twice, um, the primetime games, the breaks that we get in between, being able to watch this team on television without a direct TV or for, you know, for those of us who are on the East Coast or stuff like that. Um, that's a big deal to us over here on the East Coast because if you don't pay for something, you're not watching the Niners. But obviously, we're diehard Niners fans, and we pay for whatever we need to watch the games with. But, um, you know, we even get kicked off Periscope when I'm trying to fucking play it for everybody else. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, but I'm excited to hear what Kev says. Kev, what, is, what are you most excited about? All right, man, uh, there's a lot of good stuff. I just got to cover, man. But I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to go backwards real quick. That four wide formation y'all was talking about, you do realize we go four wide. They leave a, any linebacker in the middle of the field with McKinnon. Not going to happen. So, I mean, the fact that we – I'm happy that the running game finally getting some, 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 some props now too. Okay, so fast forward from that. Anthony, I'm not saying I'm not looking forward to sweeping Seattle. Well, let's just be honest. It's not gonna mean as much as it would have been had we had we beat them in, in in the times when they had their squad. I mean, I'm good for it. Yeah, goddamn it, you right. Take our fucking respect back. I'm tired of getting talked about like my goddamn dog out here, man. 
I'm going to raise a San Francisco and a Fillmore district. This, this is in my heart. You feel me? I don't have any fault behind getting talked about. It's all good. You feel me? It's our time. It's our time to go ahead and take our respect back. So, Swift and Seattle, whatever, as long as you take our respect back. And like you said, Mike, you're going to know these, these guys' names by the season end. One by one. You know, brick by brick, like they say. I'm just excited to know that we actually got something got something to play with now. You know, now now we kind of got some tools. So, man, this hey, Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, let's go get it, man. Go take our damn respect back. Perfect. Perfect. Well said. Yeah, I don't think it's going to mean as much to any of us fans if we beat Seattle um, with them playing the way that, you know, their team has imploded. But I'm going to touch base on another team in the NFC West because I'm going to be most excited when these big ass heads that are in LA start to smash against each other and their whole fucking team implodes. Yeah. Right. Or, or I'm going to be excited about when we do play the Rams. And I, I said, I was, you know, I was talking to Chuck McCarver Jr. earlier today and we were talking about, you know, this is what kind of made me bring up this topic is what we're most excited about. And I'm, and I was saying, people think I'm crazy because I've called it from day one that I think, obviously, I think we're going to beat the Rams one time. But I think that I was talking to you earlier about this, Kev, as well. I think with the quick release of of, of Jimmy G, the speed of McKinnon in the pass game and Breida in the pass game, same type of players. We talked about their middle linebackers aren't as good as their secondary. You know, their linebackers, their secondary, their second core is not as good as their front seven. Front three, front four, whatever you want to say, and they're secondary. But there's ways to exploit them. So I'm most excited about all these Rams fans that are talking shit because of Jared Goff and, and Todd Gurley getting paid like a like a champ. Pay Le'Veon Bell, people. Pay him. Um, but anyway, um <clears throat> I think there is a is an 80% chance that we can beat the Rams off of that play scheming type of thing. Uh, quick releases, intermediate throws. Uh, their their corners, other than Peters, you know, Aqib Talib's slow, bro. He's still slow. He's not as fast as he used to be. You throw up a Richie James or or a Trent Taylor who can stick their feet in the ground, or or even a Marquise Goodwin, or even Pierre Garcon. Our receivers have a lot of speed. Now, obviously, uh, Garcon's not as fast as others, but the way that they run routes is crisp, smooth. They, get, they beat you off the line of scrimmage like a number one should. I'm not saying they're all number ones, but I think that <clears throat> we can exploit them. So overall, the most exciting thing, the thing I'm most excited about is those two Rams games and watching the Rams implode. If the Rams lose three games straight or if they lose three games, they're going, they're, their heads are going to explode. You saw the Jaguars last year when we were playing them. What happened? They started fighting amongst each other. They started fighting on the sidelines, fighting against each other, and they imploded. Do that with Aaron Donald not being paid and get him back in camp and all this other things, and all these guys are getting paid and Donald's not, but Sue is and this and that. Bro, we saw it with the Philly Dream Team. We saw what happened with that. You don't pay all these big-name guys and just pray that it works out for you. Sue's an idiot, hell of a football player, but he's an idiot. (laughs) Right. So you're going to have these guys implode. And I really think they're going to implode. And I think their their heads are too big for the game right now. And Sean McVay is a young coach, and I don't think he's going to know how to handle it. I don't think he's going to know how to handle it. So I think that is what implodes their season. I'm not saying they're not going to be a good team. I still think it comes down to the Niners Rams for the NFC West. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's what I'm excited about, beating the Rams twice this year and watching them implode. That's I, I think that's what's going to happen. So, um, all right. So, I don't know, man. They were all some good ones. So, I think we I should move on to um, – go ahead, tidbit. Anthony. Go ahead. Real quick tidbit. We put up 40 on the Rams with the Brian Hoyer. We put up 40 on the Jags with the with the Jimmy G who didn't even know the whole playbook. When we go up against the Vikings this year, it, I, I don't think it's a defense that's going to be fully prepared. That's my tidbit. Like you talk about, we'll be able to scheme guys open like Kyle Shanahan does, and now we got a quarterback that should know the whole system by then. It's going to be exciting. That Rams well, team is not going to be happy. I completely, I completely agree with you, but I don't think 
I don't think it's so much of what we did with Brian Hoyer with 40 points because I mean their secondary did get better. Their their front their front line did get better. And truthfully, though, that game that we played them, when they destroyed us, Todd Gurley killed us. Like, I mean, he had like three, I think, what do you have? Like three touchdowns, two receiving and a rushing. I think we talked about this before. He killed us. He had like 287 yards, like rushing, and then like another 97 yards or something like that in the pass game. He had a ridiculous amount of yards. So Todd Gurley's a beast, but I think I think um, you know, we get we have Ruben Foster back for that game if he can stay healthy. Um, I think this whole defensive scheme is playing well and better together. And I think that we'll see a different team, a better team on the field um, than the last five games we just played in. And beating Jacksonville definitely helped us last year, confidence-wise. So, um, but yeah, I definitely agree with your little tidbits there, Anthony. And um, I agree with all of, all of the stuff that you guys said. I know you guys don't all agree with me, but that's okay because I believe in myself and I think that the Rams are going to implode this year. So whether that gets me brownie points or whatever, it don't matter. But um, all right, so let's let's go on to the next topic. Um, and and then we got a, a go ahead, Mike. I just want to say that as far as the Rams imploding, I do think that that's going to be something to watch out. Um, they gave Brandon Cooks a ton of money, and he's never taken a snap. This was before training camp. They haven't even seen this guy in pads yet. And they paid him a lot of dough. So just so you guys know, when you give that kind of when you give that kind of money out to somebody who hasn't even put on pads, you draft that guy in fantasy football. All right. So for all you fantasy football fans out there, listen, I know, I'm de I'm dead ass serious, bro. He will be the first wide receiver I take because one, that style of system, that offense is is wide receiver and quarterback friendly. He's they're gonna force him that ball. You're not giving him that kind of money to just be out there doing nothing. It's it, you got to take a three week risk on it whether you've seen it or not. Um, but, but, but I digress. Um, the Rams, I do believe, honestly, are working on a plan to pay Aaron Donald. So here's what happens if you go over the, the salary cap rules in the NFL. You get fined. Well, the truth is the Rams have one of the richest owners in the NFL. He doesn't give a shit. He didn't care for the NFL to say, oh, well, how are you going to raise the money for your, for your stadium? He said, I'm going to build it. If you guys want in on this, cool. If not, I don't need your money. I'm going to build it. He's got money. Here's my Mike's musings. This is my little conspiracy theory time, guys. He is going to sign every single one of those guys. Gurley's got signed already. Okay. Uh, he gave all this money to Brandon Cooks. He, he's gone out there and he's got um, Marcus Peters already. All right. Now, Marcus Peters on a one year deal right now. Uh, he's got to leave there. All right. Um, all that's left really is Aaron Donald. And Dominican Sue, if he wants to keep him, and Jared Goff. Let's say he pays these guys and they get fined. Okay, you chalk that up as an investment. We'll happily pay that. What, two hundred thousand dollar fine, two hundred fifty thousand? Maybe it's a million dollars. I don't. I don't know what the what the implication is for going over the cap, but it's just a fine. It's just money out of the owner's pocket. And if you have a billionaire owner like that who is willing to pay for an entire stadium to be built by writing a check. It's, it's just an investment because now I'm going to put together this superstar team, whether we are good or not, the fans are going to believe it's worth buying tickets for to come over here and watch these games. And the more superstars you have on your team, the more Jersey sales your team has, the more butts are in seats. It's, it's simple math right now. Who's the superstar on the 49ers? We got Jimmy Garoppolo and, uh, and fans like myself aren't buying a Richard Sherman Jersey. I know he's on our side and all that stuff now, but you ain't catching me with a 25 Jersey now. If it's not Jimmy Ward, it's it's not it's not going to be on me. I'm sorry, but we don't have those superstars on this team. Before it's Buckner, but he's not a superstar. You know, the tight NFL circles know who he, who he is. The defensive mind, the guys who watch NFL, they know who he is. But he's not a superstar. I'm talking about transcendent talent. A name. Jimmy Garoppolo was seen taking a porn star on a date, and it made headline news. I'm talking about that kind of star power. That's the kind of star power I'm talking about. We don't have that here. But they got it over there. Akeem Talib, Jared Goff, J uh, uh, Todd Gurley. You know what I mean? Brandon Cooks. Like they, they got it over there. Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue. They have superstars. And every one of those superstars is going to sell you a lot of jerseys. That's going to incre create revenue because then people are suddenly walking billboards for you. You have to understand it's all about money. It's all about profit. 
I'm willing, if I'm that owner, I'm willing to pay a little bit of fines and get all these guys signed long term. Fuck the cat. I'll pay the fines and watch the money come right back to me. That's all that it's you gotta play long ball, man. That's my little conspiracy theory. Aaron Donald ain't going nowhere. Those superstars are gonna be right there. Watch. But guess what? They all gonna know the names of the Niners after them five primetime games this year. So we're gonna have superstars, motherfuckers. So get out of here. <laughs> so but um, but Mike, I didn't like the tidbit there. Fans like us aren't gonna buy a jersey. That's messed up. But anyway, I got a Richard Sherman jersey. I definitely did get it. You got a Richard Sherman jersey? Yes, I did. I'm done. I gotta go, guys. I'll see y'all later. It was fun doing this. Hey, business. Mike. There, so there was <laughs> before we get into the next subject, real quick, because we're running kind of running kind of long here. But uh, yo, man, I see I see that faithful flag behind you, man. What what what's up with that thing? Is I, that the I, hashtag faithful flag adventures? That's right, man. Faithful flag adventures is here, guys. You see Jerry Rice is over here, man. Justin is over here. This right here is in Reno. Michael Wong. This is Hodge and his family over here. I mean. Mark, listen, I'm gonna you got you guys know I'm gonna rep for MB9ers over here. I'm gonna let people know that the flag has been in Pennsylvania. That's what's flying behind me right here, next to the five-time Super Bowl champ banner. But this this is what it's all about right here, guys. Faithful Flag Adventures is making its prime time debut on YouTube. That's what's happening right now. Okay. We're getting the prime time shit kicked up. Faithful Flag stuff is supposed to be uh, PG. I'm sorry, Hodge. I didn't mean to curse right there. We're getting the Faithful Flag adventures kicked off right here. You guys see it. It's going to be being in all of the videos that I do for the rest of the week. It's also, listen, man, I can't wait to do these pictures, man. I hired a pilot. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. I hired a pilot to take some pictures with this flag. That's all I can say. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Teachers out there, let's keep this ball moving, man. Let's talk about these uh, additions and subtractions that we made today. Roster changes. Yeah, roster changes. But anyway, big shout out to at 49er Hodge on Twitter, man. Starting at faithful, hashtag faithful flag adventures. Um, flag goes to a lucky fan, man. They take it around. They get it. They sign it where, the, where it's been. It's traveling all around the world. Uh, big shout out to, to Hodge for doing those types of things. Um, I'm excited to see what we get to do with that flag. Um but uh, big shout out to Hodge, man. I appreciate yeah. you and uh, sharing that with NBN and uh, allowing us to have that on our show. And I'm sure Mike's got some good stuff up his sleeve. I'm going to try to help him out a little bit once we get there. And um, if not, I will get the flag one day. It would have. It would have. I would have already had a lot of stuff done. But the thing is, <laughs> and Nick, you can attest to it here also. One of the rules with the flag is that you can't get it wet because of the signatures on it. It's been raining literally every day this week so it's not that i don't want to do anything with it i literally i can't i don't let my kids come up in this room right here but i got it up here for the for the backdrop purposes um but i i literally can't do anything with it right now but i promise you guys for the people who follow the faithful flag adventures online and and trust me they're out there i i posted a picture late last night and i wake up and boom my mentions are blowing up people are like oh there it is finally finally i like that shit man i mean i love I like that stuff, man. I really do. Uh, the Faithful Flag Adventures are here for you guys. Hodge is doing a great thing. Um, I want to thank Hodge and his wife for giving me the opportunity to do this. So I, I won't let you guys down, I promise. Yes, definitely. Search it up, guys. Hashtag Faithful, faithful Flag Adventures. <clears throat> 49 Hodge doing a great thing over there. All right, guys, so let's move on. <clears throat> All right, so we talked about things that we're excited about the most. Um, we're, we'll kind of – we can put this in there. So um, – Let's just give a I, – I just want to do a quick synopsis of this, all right? You don't have to give a reasoning. But I want you to name – I'll call out your name. We'll go Anthony, Kev, then we'll go Mike. So, Anthony, basically what I want you to do is I want you to give me one player that you will think will be really, really successful this year in San Francisco. Just one player. It's just a quick name. I don't want anybody to repeat somebody that they already said, but give me one player you think is going to be most – important and most successful on this team this year robbie gold is going to have a career year robbie gold all right and we'll talk about it kev what do you think sheldon day you know that d line sheldon day i see sheldon day surplanting and taking the spot of earl mitchell i love that you know i've heard on him a couple of times sheldon day will be big on that defensive line, giving people some much needed help. Okay, Mike. 
I'm going to stay in that same position group, man. Eric Armstead out there going to play like a contract year. That man's going to be healthy. He's going to be motivated and he's going to come for that ass. Let's go. Let's get it. I hope you're right. I think, I think a lot of paid for hoping he's right on that one. <laughs> I think a lot. Um, all right. I'm going with George Kittle. I think George Kittle leads this team this year with touchdowns. <laughs> I think George Kittle is going to have a huge year this year. He played hurt like six or seven games out of the out of the uh, the season last year. So I think I think he's going to have a big year, man. So we got Robbie Gold. We got a special teamer. We got Sheldon Day. We got defensive line. And we got Eric Armstead defensive line. I'm surprised you didn't say Joshua Garnett, but. Don't nobody want to hear about that either. Um, and George Kittle. All right. So with all those players that we just named that we think is going to have a career year or a big year, doesn't have to be a career year, but a big, a big year, a player that we have high expectations for, but we think is going to fail us on those expectations. So we'll we'll take it in reverse order this time. We'll go Mike, Kev, Anthony. All right. So I want to take a quick time out and come to reality and get, get rid of all my conspiracy theories. I honestly do think Trent Taylor is going to make the team, but I do think that it's impossible for him to have as good of a season as he did last year. I'm not talking about him not being clutch. I'm not talking about him dropping passes. I just don't think there's enough balls to go around this year. And for us to expect more from Trent Taylor, if you, if you go online, the fans are talking like he is really going to take off. Fans are looking for him to have a thousand yard season and things like that. We have to remember something. Trent Taylor with Jimmy Garoppolo was really, really, really freaking good. And I get that. But there's another strong handed wide receiver that's coming back and the that Jimmy Garoppolo never played with. That's Pierre Garcon. That's passes taken away from Taylor right there by itself. Then we drafted another wide receiver in the second round and Don and Dante Pettis. That's more passes taken away from Trent Taylor right there. I think the expectations for him are really high. We want to see him build on what he started last year. We want to see him do more. I just don't think it's I, – I don't see how it's physically possible. So I do think he's going to make the roster just so we can get away with all the uh, – put put aside all of my conspiracy theories and things like that. I do honestly think he's going to make the roster. I don't think he's going to uh, live up to the expectations. Um. I'm going to jump down my throat with this one. There's something to say with Eli Harrow now getting the shot at Leo. He may finally do his thing. I like him, but I don't know. Only because there's so much more talent around him. And he really had to shine. I mean, he really had to just come into Leo, pressures every time he's on the field, knock down, QB pressure, sacks, all that. So, Eli might be on his way out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but I will say this, though. This is his best shot, as this is his first time playing in natural position at 5 Tech DN. He came in playing 3-4 outside linebacker. That's not his spot. His spot is DN off the edge. So if he can somehow make his mark, cool. But I, I just don't know. He played Sam last year, and I don't know, man. I, I just don't think that he's going to pan out the way that we would like him to. But damn it, if he do, more power to him. Go get the quarterback. Because that, that pass rest needs CPR. Eli Harrell needs to just keep going in and out because he's in and out of everything. Because <laughs> that mofo shouldn't even be on the field. <laughs> um, Yo, you were reaching there, man. That's like in and out versus five guys, bro. You, you're reaching there, Eli Harrell. You got high expectations but don't think he's going to succeed. I do. Right, well, I know you Californians don't like five guys. It's all right. Yeah. No, five guys all day, baby. All right. All right. Yeah, because in and out fries are whiter than me, bro. <laughs> and I'm white. So, all right. <laughs> Anthony. <Yeah. laughs> Anthony, who is somebody that you expect to have high expectations this year, but you think will not meet or reach those expectations? Yeah, it's sound a little mainstream here, but uh, got to hear me out just for a quick second. Might not get the good reception, but Jarek McKinnon. Reason why I say that, <laughs> reason why I say that is because 
you can have all the tangibles you need. To, <laughs> you can have all the tangibles you need to fit your system, but those tangibles will not lead to success. Bottom line. Kyle Shanahan is great with working with whatever he's got, whatever running back it is. Don't get me wrong. But Jet's not proven. He's not fully proven. He hasn't had that lead horse role. On top of that, too, we can't expect so much from him because look at our O-line. What's going to happen with this O-line? We don't even have guaranteed guard positions. What's guaranteed is our two tackles in the center. Well, who's going to – which guards are going to open those gaps for Jet? You know, you know who knows. You need a you need a fully functioning O line to have a really good, really good run game. You know, not every team has a Le'Veon that can just be patient behind a good O line. So I'm not saying Jet won't reach our expectations, but maybe just slow the roll a little bit because we need to figure out what's going on with that O line, and we need to see how proven Jet really is. All right, all right. So you. Oh, oh, go ahead, Mike. I, I got – go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. I love it, man. Listen, man, I've been trying to tell people. They're like, oh, our, our run game is going to be so improved. We got Jared McKinnon. We got Jared McKinnon. He didn't even say this. So I'm, I'm just going to give some more credence to what he's saying. Jared McKinnon was on the Vikings for four years and never made it higher than the third string running back. Shit like that happens for a reason. All right. And we're all of a sudden saying, oh, well, he's good. He's good. He's good. Yeah, he can catch the ball and all that stuff. But you got to run also. You can't just be line up as a wide receiver. Then we signed you to be a running back. So he's, he's got to come out here and he's got actually got to do something. He could never, never get higher than third on that depth chart. That that scares the shit out of me. And, and like Anthony was saying, what about this offensive line? We're going to have four new starters on this offensive line this year. No one but Joe Staley is returning. As a starter, maybe Lincoln Tomlinson, maybe that's it. And he didn't even start all 16 last year. So there's a lot of inexperience on this line. We don't know how they're going to gel. We don't know about the, the cohesiveness that this, this line is going to have. It's, it takes time, man. And I think Anthony might be on something. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Just slow the roll. That's all it is. Just slow the roll. All right. So I guess I'm going to be the bearer of bad news because I am going with. Yep. Jimmy motherfucking G. Expectations are extremely, extremely high right now. Not saying that Jimmy can't do this, all right? And I'm going to take a lot of heat for this, but I'm going to touch on a re few reasons why. One, Anthony just touched on it. Offensive line, don't know what's going to be there yet, right? So if your running back can't run, how does that help your quarterback? It doesn't. Okay. So Anthony kind of agrees with me on this because he probably won't say it, but he kind of because he doesn't believe in the offensive line for Jarek McKinnon. All right. So I've seen out there 5,000 passing yards, 36 touchdowns, seven interceptions. I've seen people's stats for Jimmy Garoppolo that are way huge. That's right. Drink the Gatorade, Mike, because you're going to be about to be going home with me with this one. All right. Look, I love Jimmy Garoppolo. All right. But we've talked about this over and over and over and over again as the NBA Niners crew. Jimmy Garoppolo needs to work on a deep ball. Needs to work on a deep ball. Footwork, intermediate passes, great. Dropbacks, throws off his back foot a lot, gets rid of the ball quickly. And I think it's – and even watching him in New England, he did the same exact thing. Do I think, Jim, I, I, my expectations are extremely high, just as well as everybody else in this room, every Niner faithful that you could possibly think of, even not even Niners fans. Everybody's like, oh, damn, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to turn your team around. All of us are like that. But we got to cut this guy some slack, man, because when he loses his first game, it's going to be like Donovan McNabb getting drafted. People are going to fucking boom. Lower our expectations a little bit because I don't think he's going to meet the expectations that we've set for him. All right, and you're only going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt your feelings. It's going to hurt the team. I'm not I'm not expecting this. I mean, I want this guy to come out and throw for 5,500 yards. I want him to throw more than Drew Brees. I want him to throw 38 touchdowns. I want him to have a career year. But, guys, it's only going to be his eighth game in the NFL. We know, we know where Colin Kaepernick was in his eighth game of the year. All right? Look where that got him. Right? 
Not that they're the same quarterbacks. I'm just saying. Eight games, guys. Not a lot to base off of. So I think Garoppolo's expectations from all of us are too high. So like Anthony said, slow your roll. I think Jimmy is the future of this NFL team, but I don't think he's going to succeed as bad as we think or as good as we, we think he is. Lower the expectation, guys. Don't ride his ass when he loses the game. Let him develop. Let him develop the young receivers and what we have on his team, and things will be fine. But if you get if you got your expectations way up here like I do, take a step back a little bit so you don't get butt hurt because we're all going to go through it. He's going to lose a game. He's going to lose two. He may lose three, but it's building years. Lower the expectations, guys. All right, that's all I got to say. You can hate me all you want now, Garoppolo fans. Mike, all the viewers leave now. Look at look at look at the numbers just dwindling down. Oh, no, stop it! I'm look, y'all left me. I was talking to myself. All three of y'all left, other than Kev. He <laughs> couldn't get out the car. <laughs> he hey, forgot look, to hit man. the unlock button. You know, I was I wanted I want to talk talk about his uh his deep pass real quick. I know that you you mentioned that. I don't think that's quite as important as I thought it was. Now, I do think that when you got when you have guys who have the kind of speed that Goodwin has. Every every once in a while, you gotta you gotta air one out there. You know what I mean? You gotta take advantage of it. But if the offensive line is as bad as, or if the offensive line takes a step back in pass protection, we know the right tackle position is going to be worse than pass protection. We know that for a fact. I don't think anyone's going to argue that. But the rookie isn't going to come in and be one of the best right tackles in pass protection that Trent Brown was. So we know that's going to take a step back a little bit. But uh, the other thing is, if the offensive line isn't as good in pass protection as it was last year. Uh, there's no time for those down the field plays to develop. However, Jimmy Garoppolo was really, really good in that, you know, 10 to 15 yard range. And this offensive system and scheme gets the ball to these guys in space. So the yards after catch was higher than any other team in the league. Once Garoppolo got under center, as long as he continues to do that, we're going to get the 40 yard plays, the 50 yard plays, but there'll be 10 or 15 yard passes. There'll be slant routes that are going wild distance. You know what I mean? So as long as he continues to do things like that, the deep ball is going to be a little bit overrated. And I, I was the main proponent for it. He's got to get the deep ball. He's got to get the deep ball. But the more I keep looking, going back and watching the old games over and over and things like that. And I'm like, damn, we had three passes in this game for over 40 yards. Like, how come I don't remember that happening? You know what I mean? But then when you go back and you see it was a 12 yard completion that George Kittle just kept running for. You know what I mean? Or you know what I'm saying? Marquise Goodwin across the middle took it for, for 42 yards. Those are the kind of things that I'm like, oh, OK. Now I see where it is. I, I think he'll be okay. Uh, the deep ball is a little bit overrated. I see you, Anthony. Good. Floor is yours, buddy. I don't think I'm going to piggyback off what you said. I don't think the deep ball is as important when you have guys who can make plays on offense. When you got speedsters like Goodwin and Pettis, you got guys who can shake people like Kendrick Bourne. Rest in, rest in peace to my Bourne versus Robinson take, by the way. Bourne all the way. <laughs> When you got guys who can shake like Bourne and even Taylor, who is shifty enough to get open, you only really need a handful of deep ball passes per game. Tom Brady's never been the best deep ball passer, but he nails those intermediate passes. We saw Garoppolo do that. And this offense is going to have a lot of playmakers that we're going to see. And we're going to be shocked at what our receivers can do. No one knows them, but they will definitely be known this season. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think that he needs to – have a stellar deep ball. But Tom, you can't say Tom Brady didn't really have a deep ball because when he had Randy Moss, ain't nobody fucking went. They went deep all the time. That's all they did. You know what I mean? And they led the league in touchdown to, to pass the touchdown receptions. But um I'm not I'm not saying that you guys aren't are right or incorrect or anything like that because I just think that look at the pass that he hit with, you know, Kendrick Bourne was wide open. He missed him. Look at the pass with Carlos Hyde, which was deep, and Carlos Hyde just dropped it. I mean, that was a good throw. That was on Carlos Hyde. Take that away. But <clears throat> how many times um, Goodwin had to slow down and turn around and catch the ball falling backwards, or, or you know, turn like stop in in space and come back to the ball? And Mike, me and you talked about this before. There was like three or four uncontested throws that the receivers had to come back and go up and get. Um, and it's only because of his footwork. It's something that I think Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo will fix. 
And I don't think that it's as important as we all think as well, but I think you still have to have that threat. You know what I mean? If you take Aaron Rodgers out and just make a him into, he has that deep threat. Their safeties have to play him honest. They have to play back. If they don't trust you in that situation, it definitely takes away from your game plan. Players move up. They play shallower. They play different zone, different types. You know what I mean? So you have to have to be able to have that threat. I, I talked about this earlier to you, Kev, and Anthony, is the way I think even, I mean, all the fans too, the way I think we beat the Rams is quick intermediate throws. Jimmy Garoppolo is beast at that. Our receivers are quick and, and shifty and, and speed off of the line of scrimmage. And I don't think that we're going to need that deep ball, but it's the same as the play action. If the offensive line's not working and your running back's not working, your quarterback's not going to work either. So, I mean, they all go hand in hand. So we've all sat here and all said running backs, offensive line, and I'm saying quarterback. They all go hand in hand. If your quarterback's throwing the ball hell, hella downfield, it's going to open up your play action. If your run game's working, it's going to open up the play action. Everything goes off of each other. So go ahead, Anthony. I saw you had something to say. I was just going to say, a la Brian Hoyer. When nothing's working, even with Shanahan, who thought he could trust Hoyer, you see how bad it falls apart. I mean, our offense for the first eight to ten weeks last season, minus that Rams game, was a whole lot of field goals. So it's nice to have a quarterback that has at least shown he is capable, unlike our past. Yeah, definitely. Another um, thing, go ahead, Mike. Really quick, you were talking about keeping the defenses honest with the deep ball and all that. Um, if the defense is afraid of the receiving weapons running past them, that'll keep a safety back a little bit also. You know, and that's why that I, you're going to think I'm hating on Taylor again. That's why I'm saying a guy like uh, James versus Taylor, there's a, there's a difference in in what the, the, the respect that they demand. Nobody, nobody, nobody thought that Taylor was ever going to take one of those kick returns to the house. He doesn't have that kind of speed. And Taylor got the ball in space plenty of times. He never busted a big one to the house. His long was a 35 yard uh, reception last year. And, and that didn't result in a touchdown. He never He's not walking away from anybody. But you get the ball in the hands of guys like Pettis and guys like Richie James and guys like Marquise Goodwin in space, and all of a sudden, or even Kendrick Bourne, those four guys in space are freaking dangerous. And those guys are going to be the ones that keep safeties on us. Even, even McKinnon right. and Brita. Even McKinnon and Brita. Yeah, and I don't. I think what makes Taylor so good is his ability to separate the line of scrimmage. It's not speed. It's just his ability to separate and not get caught up with the defender. That's what makes Taylor so um, – that's what makes Taylor so special is getting off the line of scrimmage. Oh, shit, look who's here. Ali Ali Oxenfree. Ali, hold on. I'll introduce you in a second. But I agree with you. But I, what I was trying to say was if there is no deep ball like that, the safeties can move up. You know what I mean? And take away, you know, they can move up and take away that intermediate throws and the linebackers can play differently. But I don't think it's as important as, as we all think it is. But like I said, it was just expectations. You know, don't expect Jimmy Garoppolo to go out and throw for 5,500 yards, 40 touchdowns. You know what I mean? Um, so um, anybody else want to touch on player? Let Go ahead, Mike or uh, Kev. All right, real quick. <clears throat> We've all had the same the same thought about Jimmy G and his deep ball. His footwork is terrible. Now, if you watch it, if you watch when he passes, he he his footwork is is off. It's, it's like it's, I'm not sure if he don't trust himself or what. And then again, O line. But like you said, Ant, it starts up front, and the deep ball isn't important until it is. And I'm gonna tell you like this: teams know how fast we get the ball off, so teams may be sitting on these short routes. So double routes are going to come into play too. Double routes, wheel routes. So there's going to be a point in time where he has to have that touch downfield, hit somebody downfield. And I'm sure he's worked on that. I'm sure KS has made sure he worked on that. And uh, I just hope he gets better with it because teams are going to start keying on that. They're going to know we said about five to seven yards will be good. You know, so, um, hey, the old line, though, like you said, two tackles in the center. We're missing two guards. So hopefully all that comes together materializes. Yeah, I definitely I definitely think that um it, it 
I think Jimmy Garoppolo's season is going to fall in two things, how well the running back plays between the tackles and obviously the offensive line. That's going to – yeah, yeah. I mean, not even just with, with our pass rush. I'm just saying Jimmy Garoppolo's season to be right. really good is, you know, it's going to fall on the running back and the offensive line, obviously. So – um but we'll move on to that. But I want to get Ali's real quick. Just give me two players, Ali, real quick. We we talked about um, what you're most excited about this season. Just give me one thing. It could be a player. It could be anything. One thing that you're most excited about this season. Just a quick rundown. All right, man. Uh, que pasó, mi familia? What's up? How you doing? Nothing but bananas. Um. The mo- one thing I'm most excited about this season is Levi Stadium. I'm excited to see that place turn up. That place is going to be sold out every game all season long. It's going to be rocking. Whether you're, whether you're rocking the red jersey, a white jersey, a throwback, everybody should be on their feet. Everybody should be into it. I don't want to see anybody like half the stadium empty during the start of the third quarter. Everybody should be on their feet in that game. You, you know, you're paying, you're paying a premium dollar for your tickets. You might as well go and sh- support the team, support the fans. I know it gets hot out, um, but look at if, if you don't think the fans can make a difference, look at, look at some, of the, <clears throat> some of the louder stadiums in the league and, and what difference that makes. So uh, I'm ex- that, that's, one, that's probably one of the biggest things I'm most excited for this season is just to see Levi Stadium uh, just rocking, just like like we haven't seen it before since the stick. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. That you just hit my heart. And yeah, it does get hot out there. But buy another fucking refreshment. <laughs> Drink some more beer. Get loud. Baby. Buy buy two. Buy three. Buy four. <clears throat> as long as you're not driving. Yeah, yeah. Uber and Lyft. There's a special announcement. Make sure you pay me. <laughs> and don't go to don't don't go to In and Out. <laughs> um all right so ali we heard about that so all right so our last ep- our last segment was and just give me something real real quick is a player that you have high expectations for but you don't think that will succeed those or will be successful successful with those expectations so um basically um Just somebody – sorry, I froze there for a second. Just somebody that you think you have high expectations for. Like I, ha- I said Jimmy Garoppolo, and I don't think that – I think I don't think he's going to reach what expectations I have for him. It's surprising to say, and I might get a lot of hate for this, it's uh, Jaquiski Tart. And the reason, why, the reason why I say that is because um, – I don't remember the last time Jaquiski Tarts played a full season. I'm worried about him staying healthy for a full season. Because if, 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 if Jaquiski Tart is healthy for a full season, he's a difference maker. That, that's, that, that safety unit turns in from, from very good to an all-pro safety unit with Colbert. That, that could be two pro bowlers right there. So I, I have yet to see um, Jaquiski Tart's body hold up for a full season. Um, and until he proves me wrong, I will continue to doubt him. I, I, I got mad love for Jaquiski. Uh, you know, I, it, it's, not, it's not that I don't. It's just that I don't think I, I, I have yet to see. He's, he's kind of along with the Jimmy Ward kind of thing. He, um, he's, he's, I, I, I don't remember if he's played. I don't believe he's played a full season. And so if, if someone will have to look that up for me, but I don't believe he's played a full season. So, um. When he's on the field, he's a difference maker, but he is not on the field as often. Yeah, no, I, I completely I completely agree with you. I got into that little discussion with um, Scott, one of our writers before, was I'm like, I don't understand why everybody's so high on Jaquiski Tart, but um but um because he's never played a full season, he always has an injury that he can't get through a season. So um but there's there's uh, a thing Luke Walsh said in the room in the comments, and I think we should try to make this a thing, you know, if it's okay with Luke. Is he said what you said was make Levi the new stick. So 
We should start like a hashtag or something like that. Make Levi the new stick. Like, I can't agree with you more, Ali. I think that's something that we should all be excited about. And I think that it, it, everybody it was, should it, make that place. It was special. Um, um, those last couple games, the Titans and the Jaguars game specifically, um, watching that on TV, you had Ted Robinson mention something. You had something, uh, he mentioned something or late last season or it might have been off season. He's like, for the first time in a, in, since Levi Stadium was open, you had people in the end zone standing up um, during Robbie Gold's field goal to win it and the Titans game. Um, for the first time, and that was full, and it was rocking. And what that brings, the kind of, the kind of how that changes the culture, and what that brings to the team, to those players especially, they're like, yo, this the fan base is buying in. Um, let's 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 go prove that they are not wrong in supporting us. You know, so it, it, it's it's something I'm extremely excited for. Like we're we're. We're start we're starting Minnesota. The the game against Detroit. I know I know a lot of y'all are going. I I I hope that everyone is on their feet. Like even 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 on not on offense, and that's something that that should be that should not be uh, like understated. Like I, I feel our our fan base, and you can crit- criticize me if I'm wrong. I've seen it in the past. Our fan base is very not very good when our offense is on the field, they're making noise and stuff. When the offense is on the field, shh, quiet. Peyton Manning was the sheriff with that. He'd get pissed off at the Broncos and Colts crowd when, when, they, when the offense was on the field and they were making noise. Even if things are getting hyped, like, like when the offense is on the field, they're moving, shh, keep it down. But when the defense is on the field, everybody crank up. Everybody should be on their feet. Everybody should be stomping banging, clapping, just, just let's go, man. Like, like, right, let's go, man. Turn that place up. Yeah, I totally Ali. agree. So go ahead, Mike. Ali coming in with the hat of fan. That's what I'm talking about. This is how you become a fan. This is how you got to do it. You got to rep your set, man, but you got to know when to rep, man. I can't stand when I go to a game. I'm in the nosebleed section. And people tell me, sit down, please. Man, we 42 feet above sea level. What you talking about? Sit down. You don't relax, lady. <laughs> Let me enjoy my cheap ass seat up here in the sun. Okay. Don't don't tell me to sit down. You need to get up. You 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 two rows ahead of me. You get up. Okay. But uh listen, man. Um, we got one more thing that we have to discuss really quick. Uh the 49ers signed three players and they cut three players. Um they signed two defensive linemen. Um, I'm gonna let uh Kev talk about them. It was Will Sutton. And Cedric Thornton. All right. So I don't know much about those guys. I know that um, I know that Kev looked them up really quick. I don't know if there was anything impressive about either one of these guys. Will Sutton's name sounds familiar, but I could just be thinking about the last name Sutton. Uh, but Kev, what you got on that? Uh, yeah, you know, man. Uh, hashtag film junkie. You know, as a, as a coach in the DC, I stayed in the film room. Uh, so I went right to YouTube, looking both up. I get their camp bodies, but this is the thing in my head about a cat body. A cat body has to be a body that can potentially become a threat. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got people behind you who are not pushing you, it, it, it's, it's all for naught. So, you know, I mean, uh, Sutton and, uh, and and Thornton, I saw one clip where he, he pushed down Tony Romo and the other guy, uh, I think it was Sutton, he said he was like 300 pounds, but he's short, six feet, 300 pounds, and he got small arms, short arms. You know, playing a three tech and he's not that quick. So uh, then the other guy, uh, Thornton. I mean, he played D tackle too. I mean, but I'm saying I don't see him beating out def- definitely not Defoe and or Sheldon Day or DJ Jones. I mean, so for right now it's just depth. So I would like to see some some more impressive camp bodies, but whatever. Or Ronald Blair. Or Ronald hey, Blair. I, I, I like I like Blair. I, I wrote an article on him too. And people, people told me I was tripping. But Blair can play from five down to one. So, you know, I'm looking for him to have a big year, too. Appalachian Sheldon State. Day. Appalachian State holding it down there, man. Uh, Ronald Blair is the man. He, he is the jack of all trades. I really like him. Hope he gets some more burn this year. Um, you know, and 
So, yeah, they, those are probably just camp bodies. Uh, and anyone signed this time of year, either a team has familiarity with already or they're just camp bodies. And with this last edition that we had, uh, it's going to be the former, which was familiarity, uh, J.P. Flynn. And if that name sounds familiar to you 49er fans out there, he's an offensive lineman. He played really, really well last year. Um, in fact, I thought that he actually earned a roster spot. Um, but it turns out that he in, he got injured, and so the Niners did not keep him. They didn't even put him on IR or anything like that. Uh, but he was signed today. Uh, he signed a two-year deal. Um, so I don't know if that means anything. It wasn't just a one-year deal, but they gave him a two-year deal. Offensive lineman, he does not fit the mold for what the team was looking for. He's a bit heavier, um, but this man is really, really good. I, mean, I, I watched a lot of preseason film last year, and, of course, in preseason, you're going to have more backups playing the starters. Um, and he was one of the guys who just stood out on film a lot to me. Um, in fact, uh, this guy is the reason the 49ers traded Brandon Thomas. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking the wrong year. Never mind. I take that. Brandon Thomas was two years ago. But JP Flynn was a good uh, offensive lineman that I liked last year. So hopefully he uh, can come in here and make some noise. I got excited about that. Um, so we we signed three guys, JP Flynn, Will Sutton, and Cedric Thornton. Uh, the corresponding move, the three cuts. Defensive back, Don Jones, and um, offensive lineman, Jamar McGloster, and defensive lineman, Blaine Woodson. Uh, the only one of those guys that I know anything about is Don Jones, uh, DB, and he just can't seem to get right. The 49ers finally got, went ahead and cut him. Uh, maybe he'll be a practice guy, practice squad candidate. Uh, if I'm not – wasn't Don Jones injured? Anybody in there got anything on him? Yeah, he was – ACL, ACL injury last year. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if the, the injury is taking longer to heal or what. Maybe they won't even bother putting him on practice squad. Uh, Don Jones is a good guy, but just not the year for you, bud, with the 49ers. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed, keep you in prayers, hope you heal up and uh, get your chance, man, all right? Um, but other than that, I'm done. Uh, Nick, is there anything else you want to do, say? No, um, nothing as of right now. I just want to say, Luke Walsh, I love that. He said the Blair Blitz Project. Oh, oh, oh. I love it. I um, love it. But um, yeah, man. Um, I also forgot to bring up, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. The three thousand subscriber, you will be entered in to win the Adrian Colbert thirty-eight autographed jersey. Hit the subscribe button down there, guys. Make sure you hit it, and we will be doing that giveaway once we hit three thousand subscribers. So, I think we're about five or six hundred off right now. We'll be um, there before that. you do it. What's that? So we'll be there before you know it. The season is here, and this is when the the YouTube subscriptions start ramping up once we become regular. Um, so it, we're going to be there. You guys going to make sure you want to uh, check us out for that. Yeah, guys. And if any of you are going to be at the home opener against the Lions, I will be there. Hit me up in DM, man. I'd love to meet any of you guys. Come party, have a drink, do whatever, man. I will be at the home opener. Um, I will be sitting on the Bud Light patio. So um, – let me know what's up. We'll definitely get up together, and uh, you got my DM. You can find me on Twitter at 49ERFaithful365. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I'm not going to sign out, but I do want to say uh, – so I want to do a show for you guys. The, the season is here. Fans are excited. So I want to do a show on Sunday, all right? And on Sunday, what I'm going to do is we're going to do an open floor forum uh, like Nick and I did previously, and we're going to let the fans get a chance to come in and, and talk for two minutes at a time. Um, so if you guys are watching now, you want to be a participant. Uh, if you are rewatching this video before Sunday, uh, make a note. Okay. We are going to go live on Sunday. I can't promise you got the time right now because I am on call for my job. I do work in the medical field. So, uh, there are times when my phone rings, I just have to pick up and go, but I promise you guys Sunday, we are going to go live. We'll have a couple of topics to discuss, but it'll be an open forum for all fans and supporters of nothing but Niners to come in, chime in and give your opinions on this wonderful team. Okay. Uh, Nick. Take us home, man. I, I got I got one more question. Is it can I can I ask or you guys want to wrap it up? Go ahead. What's what's your question? Good. All right, it's a question for everyone. So, my question is, of it's it, it's it's a little bit of a complicated question, but like, of where this team is right now, what what one area of the team, either offense or defense be a pass rush, be a corner, needs to be coached up the most. And by that, I mean, like, what, what area of, of that team, like, needs, like, they need to go in the film room, um, and this, this, this unit or this, this specific 
uh, area needs to be coached up the most um, yeah. before the season starts. So like in training camp is when you work out all the kinks and we're going into training camp right now. So what, what one area of the team um, needs to be coached up the most and uh, whoever wants to lead it off, whatever, whoever wants to lead it off can, can go. I'm going to go first because I got to run, um, but it's definitely the defensive line and pass rush. Uh, we brought in Chris Kiffin from uh, Florida Atlantic uh, just for that purpose. He's uh, being he's teaching these guys how to pass rush and things like that. And uh, you heard Defoe mention it a little bit today in the presser. Uh, they're learning how to pass rush as a unit. Um, you know, you might not be able to get to the quarterback, but if you can crash the edges, uh, it'll it'll make him force him to step up in the pocket. You might not be able to get to him from the middle, but you can force him to the outside where one of your guys has leverage over there, um, over their defender. So, um, you know, it's, it's 100%. I think it's an easy answer for me. Uh, the pass rush, the, the pass rush was a little bit, uh, it is what it is. It was anemic last year. Uh, it, it was non-existent to a point uh, when your sack leader had six sacks. That's, that's not a good thing unless you have all eight of your defensive linemen with six sacks, like you see with the Tennessee Titans or with the Jaguars, but that wasn't the case. We went from six uh, to like three or no three, six to four and then three, 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 two and a half. Like it, it, it wasn't enough. And uh, that's the one unit that has to do the most, but listen, guys, I am going to uh, put my camera off. You guys finish this thing up, rock out faithful unite. I'm going to be out of here. You guys wrap this thing up. Okay. Go ahead. Answer the question. All right, so Kevin, what do you think about Ali's question? One thing. All right, uh, secondary. If you watch the games last year, I know we play a lot of real soft zone a lot. That's because, you know, the pass rush was terrible. But if you, if you watch, a lot of times we're out of position. You know, be, be it a corner or safety, out of position. So if them guys out of position, it's a wrap. So I really think that secondary needs some help. And and it being another year for them guys under their belt and being more groomed up is going, is going to help too. But I really think the secondary, blowing coverages, out of position, things of that nature. So I'm going to say the secondary. I can't agree with you there because we had Rashard Dukey Robinson and Dante <laughs> Horrible Johnson. So. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, I mean, yeah. That was last year. <laughs> that was last year. I forgot about him just that fast. <laughs> started playing and now we have Sherman. Yeah. But um, uh, I'm just saying, I, I'm not sure that it, I think, I think the DBs are definitely going to be coached up this year, but I think any, any position on this team can be coached up. But Anthony, what do you, uh, what do you think? So I'm going to go off of what he said. I'm going to go off the secondary, but I'm going to be a little more specific. And I know we're starting to run out of time, but I'm just going to keep it quick. The safeties. We don't know if Sherman's fully healthy. We don't know if Akello with the spoon will take that next step. And we don't know much about K1 just yet. The safeties are the last line of defense. Those safeties need to know what to do, what's going to happen if their corners aren't doing the job. Okay. So I think the pass rush is actually going to be bigger and better this year. And that's only because of the hire with Kiffin. I really love the hiring of Kiffin. He's very underrated. I mean, Kiffin's going to bring some bring some unique style to the to this front, and and I'm say, saying that. But um, um, I can agree with the secondary and the safeties in in general. I think those are going to be the two. If you can't get a pass rush, your se your secondary and safeties have to be on point. So, um, but mainly, I I have to agree with Mike. The pass rush needs to be coached up. It has to be coached and coached and coached and coached and coached because without that. It exploits us on everything. Ali, who do you think? I can't believe none of y'all said this, man. It's an obvious answer. It's the running backs. The running backs. Think about it. We don't have a true starter. Not one of our running backs has, is a, is a full-year starter. Think about that for a second. We have Jer Jarek McKinnon coming in on a four-year contract, and he's never started a game. He's got to be coached up by Shanahan of how to – how to play in the system. We have Matt Breida. He, he wasn't a four-year starter. He, he, he shared time with, with, with Carlos Hyde. In, in terms of my question, I said, where, where do we need to be coached up the most? Um, Shanahan and, and uh, running back coach, I can't remember his name right now. They need to coach these guys up the most right now. That, that's one position that, that I'm worried about going into the season for sure. And, and um, without having a true starter there, that's... That's that's a big concern of mine. 
I, I mean, I can agree with you, but um, I, I, I mean, Shanahan did it with Tevin Coleman and, and uh, whatchamacallit. They weren't starting running backs. So when he first got them, they weren't running back, like starting running backs in the league. So And with Cleveland too. Yeah. I mean, he, he knows what he's doing. So I don't think that – I don't think – I think you're thinking too much into that as because of not starters. You know, and this – we got into this conversation earlier about Richie James and Dante Pettis and stuff like that. Like – Still a new system he's going into, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but I mean, he, I mean, I, I agree. I, 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 I get it. That's the, that's, that's the, it, it, uh, like, like, that's, I mean, it's kind optimistic, of optimistic, optimistic point is like he's done it before with Devontae, he's done it before with Tevin, he's done it before in, in Cleveland. But, um, how do we know that, that McKinnon will be able to grasp this system? Um, how, like, does he have, how do we know that he'll be able to? There, there was a reason why he wasn't the number one guy in Minnesota and that, that the Vikings decided to draft Alvin Cook. Um, why, why is that the case? That, that, has, that has me as a big question mark. So I'm really, uh, as training camp here uh, approaches tomorrow, pads go on, and um, I'm really interested to see uh, that position group and see how um, they have grasped the playbook over um, – over the uh, off-season training program and 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 uh, uh, how they will continue to grasp it during training camp and uh, going forward. Right. No, and I completely agree with you. I just can't I can't feed off of anything from training camp because we all know that name DeAndre White, and we all know you know these names that Brian Hoyer that were killing it in training camp. And I'm I I'm a firm believer that I'm not getting sucked into the media this year. Um, it Katie Cannon, year. huh? Katie Cannon. Yeah, yeah, KD Cannon, you know, and, and gets cut. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I can't buy into it. But I think the overall – I mean, I think your question is kind of open-ended because of the fact that there's so many different answers. And and my coach told me this before when I, when I was learning to coach. You can never stop coaching anybody or anything. Coaching is from day one until you're six feet under the no, – No, right, of course. You know, but, but my – my 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 goal with the question was in terms of like where could they will need the most help and most improve, improve right right so and, yeah and I'm I'm not um, saying that you're wrong I'm not saying that you're wrong with running backs I'm not saying yeah. that you know uh, Anthony's wrong with safeties or or uh, Kev's wrong with DBs or whatever because every person on the field needs to be coached and and I and I have a different opinion because I'm not as worried about McKinnon as as most people are like you know as you are or things like that. Because I seen Breida run between the tackles last year, and he did it better than Hyde last year, and and that's proven in the games, and that's why Hot Shanahan was going with Breida in those crucial moments because he had more faith in him. So, yeah, um, you know, but like I said, it's just it's just opinions differ. You know what I mean? They're they're different from everybody. So, um, it's a great open ended question. I I just don't think that, you know, the answer that you were looking for was running backs, but. We all can't sit here and say running backs because we all have different opinions, obviously. But and um, if Jet doesn't work out, if Jet doesn't work out, Le'Veon will look good with us next year. Yeah, this is true, man. If he doesn't get paid, he needs to get paid in in, in Pittsburgh. But just horrible, man, horrible. Um, Ali, did you see the breaking news? Atlanta, Atlanta signed uh, Julio. No, did they? Yeah, yeah, they they agreed. They restructured his contract for nineteen. Oh so, wow, I didn't see that. Yeah, so that was broke on here. But, um, guys, man, I really appreciate everybody jumping in tonight, and I know we went a little longer than we should have, but these are always fun, and you can't you can't cut back people's comments and, and, and stuff like that. So I appreciate it. Um, hopefully we I will be with you guys on Sunday for the show or if anybody's going to join the show. Um, but if not, man, it's full season go, guys. So be on the lookout for Nothing But Niners. We are everywhere. Check us out on nothingbutniners.com. Make sure you follow all of our social media accounts, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, we're everywhere, man. Check out all of our SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play. Uh, Mike's been dropping some pods. They just had a great guest in Larry Kruger on the other day. Um, and I believe I believe Scott was going to be on a radio show tonight, 95.7 The Game, I believe. Um, I wasn't going to be able to – or that's tomorrow. I'm sorry. Take a listen for that. I think it's 95.7 The Game, I think it is, or 96.1. I'll let you know. Uh, check our Twitter account and Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. 
Um, but I believe he's going on sports radio there. Uh, Kyle, uh, Scott's going to fill in for us and, and do that. Um, we got a lot of great interviews coming up, uh, some players coming on. Um, just make sure you tune in, hit that subscribe button, and follow us everywhere, man. And anybody else got anything before we go? Hit that subscribe Hit that subscribe button like Jimmy G. Hit Kia Miara. There you, there you go. <laughs> Taking the scrunchie off. Take the scrunchie off. Hit that subscribe button right there. You know what time it is when she takes the scrunchie off and puts it on her wrist. No, I'm just joking. All right. Uh, Ali, you got anything before, Ali, you got anything before we jump out of here? No, I'm good, man. Thank you. All right. Kev, Kev, Kev. Silverado, Kev. What's going on? You got anything? Hey, man. You know what it is. Live in Silverado. And be honest, baby. Find us. Yeah, hard to find. We out here. Hey guys, hashtag everything. Even Jerry Rice gave us a shout out today. Check it out on Twitter at nothing but nine E R S. All right, guys. And above all else, stay faithful. We out.